Hi guys, Jordan here with Motion Array, and in this video, we're gonna be going over the entire editing process from start to finish and showing you each stage along the way, hopefully helping you to stay a little bit more organized through the process. So let's jump into it. If you're making a video, whether it's a narrative film, music video, or commercial production, business explainer video, weddings, or live event coverage, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have loads of video files, audio files, music files, and it's all gonna end up in a jumbled mess like this, unless you keep on top of it. And the very first step is even before you open up your video editing software. We'll call this the preparation stage. This is where you organize on your computer a project folder that's gonna house all of the media you use throughout your project. And from here, we're actually gonna create another series of folders inside. Your software's project folder, the raw footage, your audio files, your music, your graphics, compositing project files, still images, or anything else that might be specific to your video production. Once you have these in place, you're gonna make sure that whenever you add media onto your computer, you're adding them into one of these folders. So why is this important? Well, if you ever run into the situation of needing to find the original piece of media, then it's pretty easy to figure out where it is. If you're needing to find the original music file you're using in your project, just go to your project folder and you know it's somewhere in here. Easy. The second reason is in the event that you need to hand off to a different editor. It becomes a lot easier to migrate that project to somebody else when you don't have to go digging through your entire computer to find each individual unique media file. It's all right here. And thirdly, it makes it really easy to import into your editing software like for me, Premiere Pro. Normally the process of importing your footage would require you to either drag and drop each individual media file or go to file, import, and select everything that you want to have included in your project. Then you'd have to go to create folders inside your software and place your media into each one, but they're all jumbled around and this is a mess. But by organizing it the way that we did in advance, we can now just highlight all of these folders and drag and drop them into our editing software and everything keeps its organization and structure. And I didn't mention this, but I have media files inside of all of these folders. And when you drag them inside, all the media stays in the correct folder. And now you don't have to do any additional organization. You can just get right down to editing. This may depend on your editing software, but if for example, yours can't do that, then you can still create each of those different folders inside of your software and then just drag and drop each of those different sections in organized chunks. All that work is still really helpful. Next up, we have the assembly. Now that we've imported our media into our editing software, we're actually gonna assemble it all together so that we have something to actually work with on our timeline. Essentially, this process consists of watching all of the footage that you've compiled up until this point and dragging and dropping the pieces that you wanna keep onto the timeline. It's important at this stage of your editing or even when you're bringing those media files into your software to begin with, that you create what are known as transcoded video files. Basically, you wanna make very light, easy to work with video files from the originals to work with so that you can edit and make decisions really quickly and easily. In Premiere Pro, this is really easily done by creating what are called proxy files, which automatically connect to your original footage and then swap out at the touch of a button. You can even configure it to automatically create these proxies when you import any footage into your project. Remember, at this stage of your editing, you don't care how nice or how crisp things look, you're just going after the basics. And at this point, if your editing software allows you to, you may wanna create two separate timelines that are directly on top of one another. This is called a pancake timeline setup. The first one is for footage that basically just makes the cut and is good enough to pass on to the next stage. While the second one is for the actual timeline where the footage will get passed along for the rough cut. The reason you may wanna do this is if you have multiple options for a particular shot that you like, but it's distracting to have multiple options in your rough cut timeline. Having them in a separate timeline can help you to make decisions and go back and forth without having to dig through every single piece of video footage that you have. The other reason you may wanna do this is if you're making selections for something like a montage where there's a bunch of different great shots that you're compiling together, but you don't necessarily have a particular structure in mind. You might really like a moment, even if you're not sure if there's a place for it in your final edit. So placing it in an intermediary timeline can help you to make really quick decisions, even if you're not 100% sure that it's gonna make the cut. But once you've gone through all your footage and made the selections of the footage that's actually gonna stay, it's time to move on to the rough cut. This is essentially the process of taking your footage and creating a skeleton of what you want your project to look like. The only thing you're really concerned with at this stage is order and sequence of events. In a narrative film, for example, this is following the script and storyboard to make sure that each scene happens as it was intended. Scene one, shot one, two, three, then scene two, shot one, two, three, then scene three, and so on. You're basically just putting things in order. If there's any titles or text that needs to be included in the scene, they should be incredibly basic. Don't spend a lot of time on them. Once you finish the rough cut, watch it back from start to finish. If you did your job correctly, you should hate it. 
and I'm only sort of half kidding about that. If you know the intended result, it should be incredibly frustrating to see all of the potential that it has in the direction that it's going, but none of the fine detail elements in place. All of your footage should be low quality transcoded files with no color correction, there should be no sound design, no effects, or really no polish at all that's gonna help it sink in. The reason this is the case is because if you get really excited and do all the compositing for a VFX shot, for a scene because you really just wanna see how it turns out, and then the director comes back and says, hey, we're gonna cut that one scene, then all of that work you did was wasted. The same thing goes with color correction. Don't worry about getting the skin tones just right if that shot might not even end up in the final product. Once you've completed a rough cut, this is when you're gonna bring in the directors, the producers, or really anybody who's calling the shots in your particular case, and they'll watch it back and give notes. And if you're working on your own with a client, you can actually send them the rough cut so that they can watch it themselves and make notes. And here at Motion Array, we actually have a video collaboration tool that you can upload your video to so that your clients can point to certain areas, specify exact time codes, and give you detailed responses so that you know exactly what they want changed, even if they're on the other side of the world. But now you've gotten their notes back and you're gonna have to make some changes, which is always gonna be the case, by the way. So now begins the process of working closer and closer to what's called the final cut. As you continue to edit and tighten up the rough cut, your goal is to get towards what's known as the fine cut. This is the point at which you make all of the major structural changes that the directors or producers are requiring of you, and you're really starting to see the video project develop and start to take shape. Small details are coming together, the pacing feels tighter, but you're still not doing anything like color correction or intensive sound design at this stage yet. This is because you're waiting until the fine cut of the film is finished and you're able to declare picture lock. Picture lock is the term used to describe a video or film that's structurally finished. The color hasn't been touched and you're still working with low quality video files, but as far as the amount of time that each shot is taking up, that should not change from this point forwards. The reason that this stage is so important is because it's here that you're actually able to start sending things to different departments. If you have VFX that needs to be done in your film, you now have the exact number of frames that each number of shot needs work done for. Your audio engineers will be able to know to the millisecond, to the beat, exactly when music needs to hit and when moments are gonna happen and not worry about if their music is gonna be out of sync later on if changes are made because what you see is what you get. And people like your colorist won't be correcting and grading footage that might get cut out later because you've declared that from here on out you're not making structural changes. But that's a really good point actually. If your colorist is gonna be working with correcting and grading detailed shots, then they're gonna need the original source files, which is why it's also at this stage in the process where you reconnect those original source files and swap them out with the transcoded ones. This stage is called online. Now, normally the process of swapping in back those original files is gonna make things really choppy and difficult to work with, but oh yeah, you're not making any more changes. It's done. This is where teams divide and conquer, and each provide a different piece of the finished polish to give back to the final product. It's the finishing coat of paint that really ties it all together and makes sure that it looks, sounds, and feels like a finished product. Once each of these different departments gives you back their finished piece, you're finished and you're ready to finally export your completed video. Congratulations. To those of you who are just getting into filmmaking, this might seem a little much. Almost an unnecessary degree of organization and specificity. And the truth is, is that if you're doing everything by yourself where you're the writer, director, editor, cinematographer, colorist, sound designer, then yeah, you can kind of do whatever you want. But this step-by-step -step process is still incredibly helpful even if you don't have teams of dozens or hundreds of people helping you out in different ways. The basic idea is that the order of events matter. The whole idea is that this is designed so that the least amount of time is wasted and so that you're able to maximize each step along the way. This is gonna help you create the best possible finished product in the least possible amount of time. And in the growing world of social media with never ending cycles of content, being able to create multiple videos in as short of time as possible is essential for growing your brand, your business, your film studio, or yes, even your YouTube channel. So get out there and make something awesome. I really hope that you've been able to get a lot out of this video on the organization of editing. Thank you so much for taking the time and can't wait to see you in the next video.